Okay, Sebastian, good job. I need to wait until everybody crosses the line. I need to wait, but it's looking good. You just wait, Sunshine, you just wait. Hamilton, P2, Button, P3. There's another two cars coming around in 15 and 16. Rosberg, P4, Ubica, P5, Dubis, Weltmeister. Ah, thank you, boy. Sebastian Vettel, you are the world champion! The world champion, well done, enjoy it! You are the man! Yeah! Yeah! Late 2020, I already covered Sebastian Vettel's first championship in the world of Formula 1, which he overcame all of the odds and after a long, eventful 2010 season, was able to outclass and finish ahead of Fernando Alonso by four points at the conclusion of the 2010 season under the lights in Abu Dhabi. Racking up five wins as well as ten poles and podiums, Vettel was a force to be reckoned with, and it showed in the next three years that he was quick, and I mean very quick. Before I go any further, if you like what you are seeing so far, feel free to hit that red subscribe button so you'll be notified and stay up to date with new videos like this one that I'll be posting on this YouTube channel. I also recommend turning on the notification bell so you won't miss any Formula 1 or other motorsport content on this channel. And with that out of the way, let's discuss Vettel's remaining championship winning seasons from 2011 through 2013, starting with 2011. With the production of the Red Bull RB7 given its incredible insane speed in pre-season testing and improvements on the blown diffuser and exhaust system from its predecessor of the championship winning RB6, right from the outset, Red Bull were a threat for the title for the second year in a row. Technical director Adrian Newey had flattened the exhaust to the rear of the floor as it reached 5 centimeters to the exhaust and blew under the raised lip of the RB7. Exhaust gas from this system curves and blows out and through the sidewall of the diffuser, hence getting a mega advantage with better airflow and increased downforce. In the first 6 races, Fettel absolutely killed it winning 5 out of 6 from Australia to Monaco. Starting from pole 5 times out of 6 races thus far, he has dominated in all 6 races in the beginning of the season and leading the most laps in the process. Only time he did not win in the first 6 races was in Shanghai, finishing runner up to Lewis Hamilton at the conclusion of the Chinese Grand Prix at that circuit. Canada was the site of round 7 in the championship, and it was this race that marked, to date, the longest race ever in Formula 1 history, which looked to be in the hands of Sebastian Vettel once again, considering starting from pole and flat out dominated, leading all but 2 laps of the scheduled 70 lap race distance. But on the last lap in turn 6, Vettel slipped and lost the lead and had to settle for second behind McLaren's Jensen Button, who was the only driver who was able to keep pace with Vettel during the course of the 2011 season somewhat. Vettel would get his redemption one race later in Valencia leading 56 of the 57 laps from pole en route to a win in the European Grand Prix for the second year in a row, also setting the fastest lap of the race in the process. Next up was Silverstone, 
where it was Vettel's teammate Mark Webber with the pole position. Though Webber failed to lead a single lap up to this point in during this race, he was still decently quick and got a podium finish of third at the end of the British Grand Prix, finishing behind second place Sebastian Vettel who led the most laps, and race winner Fernando Alonso who set the fastest lap and led the second most laps, winning the British Grand Prix for the second time in his career, his sixth in Ferrari equipment. Though it didn't come without controversy considering what happened between the two Red Bull drivers coming to the conclusion of this very race. Be wise now, be wise. Understood. We understand what you mean and we're controlling the situation. And hold a three second gap, one click rearwards to look after that front left. That didn't look like a three second gap. Mark, you need to maintain the gap. Maintain the gap. Clear mark, maintain the gap. Maintain the gap, you're right, After the first nine races of the 2011 season, Vettel has never once finished or qualified outside first and second. Not to mention he was already walking away with the championship as 80 points was the difference between him and his teammate Mark Webber. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, Jensen Button kept pace with Vettel and was the only one in doing so a little bit. Turns out he's sitting in fourth in the championship table, tied with Lewis Hamilton on an equal 109 points, 95 behind Lita Vettel. But it was still early days and things would pick up for Jensen Button as the season progressed. Though at the Nürburgring that wasn't the case for the 2009 world champion with hydraulics issues forcing him to retire from the German Grand Prix. Sebastian Vettel, on the other hand, for the first time this season, qualified third and didn't lead a single lap as well as not making the podium. Fourth place was all he could do, but did manage to score 12 points. Next up on the calendar was at the Hungaroring, where Jensen Button got his redemption based on what happened in the German Grand Prix, he ends up winning the Hungarian Grand Prix. Who finished second behind him? None other than Sebastian Vettel. Scoring 18 points, this increased his lead in the championship table, and at this rate, no one could catch or challenge Vettel because what followed were more very consistent numbers. Starting from Poland, Spa, Monza and Singapore leads the most laps in all three of those locations, leading from lights to flag at Singapore and of course ended up winning in all three of those races. In Suzuka, all Seb had to do was finish on the podium to become the 2011 Formula 1 World Champion. And that's exactly what happened, crossing the finish line in third behind Fernando Alonso and race winner Jensen Button, Vettel was crowned as the 2011 Formula 1 World Champion at the conclusion of the Japanese Grand Prix, becoming the youngest driver ever to win a Formula 1 World Championship back to back. A record that still stands over a decade later.
even if Fettel finished outside of the podium places in Japan, he still locked up the championship regardless, considering the last remaining races of 2011, he kept his consistent pace, including two more victories in Korea and India, and a second place finish behind his teammate Weber in Interlagos. The only time where Fettel didn't shine was in Abu Dhabi. Right rear puncture sent him from first to last with a snap of a finger, and would have continued if the suspension wasn't damaged. Therefore, Fettel parked his car in the Red Bull box and retired. His first DNF since Korea 2010. Even so, he was the champion, and that's all that mattered. Jensen Button placed runner-up, but here's the catch. 122 points was the final margin when it was all said and done after the season finale in Brazil. That right there, and Fettel's supreme performance, shows that this young lad from Germany has got what it takes to win. And Sebastian Fettel's stats from the 2011 season look like this. 11 wins, 11 and 11, 17 podiums, 15 pole positions, clocking in only 3 fastest laps, and just 1 DNF to his 2011 history book, leading for 739 laps in the process, which the most he's ever led in a season in his F1 career, with an average start of 1.3 and an average finish rate of 2.7. Championship elite stats right there, but as us Formula 1 fans know, it only got better and better for Sebastian Vettel. After testing, it wasn't Red Bull's RB8 that was the fastest car. Instead, that honor goes to the McLaren MP427, which was the fastest of the bunch. Meaning, McLaren had a solid, decent package to contend with the Red Bull team, giving them a run for their money. In the first seven races, the only time where Seb finished outside of the points was in Malaysia. Other than that, it was a decent start to the season, with a second place run in Melbourne, as well as a dub in Bahrain, fifth place in Shanghai, sixth place in Barcelona de Catalunya, and two consecutive fourth place finishes in Monaco and Canada. After the Canadian Grand Prix, Fettel found himself in third in the championship table, trailing behind points leader Lewis Hamilton by just three points. Fernando Alonso is also in the mix, as he's in second behind Hamilton, trailing by two points. One point more than Fettel heading into the next race, and what would be the last race in Valencia. Not the last race of the season, obviously, but for the Valencia circuit, which was won by Fernando Alonso, sealing his second win of 2012. Alonso's win in Europe, you could say, was gifted, considering Hamilton's crash in a pit stop error, and Sebastian Vettel having a mechanical fault while leading. This shook things up in the championship standings as Fernando now leads, 23 ahead of Lewis, 26 ahead of our main protagonist, Sebastian Vettel. From Silverstone to Monza, the results for Vettel looked like this. Another mechanical fault set him back a little which took place in the Italian Grand Prix in Monza, which was won by Hamilton. Aside from that, racked up top 5 finishes with two of them inside the podium. It was after Monza, 
Vettel found his winning mojo, picking up four wins in a row in Singapore, Suzuka, Korea, and India, in which three of them he led from lights to flag. After the Indian Grand Prix, Sebastian Vettel has a comfortable 13-point lead ahead of Fernando Alonso. Alonso at this point at this stage was the only driver keeping pace with Vettel in the final quarter of the 2012 season. McLaren's Jensen Button and Lewis Hamilton are now out of the hunt due to the car or something else not going their way. What followed in Abu Dhabi was one of the greatest drives ever from Vettel. Having started from the pit lane in dead last at the start, he made his moves having a few close calls and getting into it with a few drivers, but regardless, going from 24th all the way to the podium in third place. Whether you love him or hate him, you gotta admit that is one hell of a comeback. Not to mention, set the fastest lap in the process. The all new state of the art Circuit of the Americas was next on the calendar for the penultimate round, in which Vettel set the fastest lap to nab pole position. But it was in the race itself, he did what he could, leading the most laps as well as clocking in the fastest lap of the race. In the end, had to settle for second behind Lewis Hamilton, who seized the moment and won for the fourth time in 2012, for what would be the last time he won in McLaren machinery. So, as we head into the final round in Brazil, Vettel still leads ahead of Alonso in the championship. Just like 2010, it's Vettel versus Alonso. Race day in Brazil, both drivers started inside the top 10, though it was Vettel ahead of his championship rival with 4th on the grid, Alonso 7th on the grid. Damp conditions meant the start would be a tricky one, and in Sebastian Vettel's case, it nearly ended in heartbreak. Spinning around, facing the wrong way after contact from Bruno Senna's Williams. Bruno was out on the spot along with Sergio Perez, but luckily, Vettel was able to continue. However, things got even more hectic for the Red Bull driver as he was experiencing a radio malfunction and due to the rain, had to anticipate when to come in and box for intermediates. Having to pit four times as well, he still worked his way through the pack and made it into the top 10. And with Alonso ahead and with the advantage, as the race came to the closing stages, 6th or higher would do for Vettel in order to become the world champion. In the final laps, he passed his childhood hero Michael Schumacher for 6th place. This is exactly what he needed to clinch the title. Not too long after Fettel's overtake, and Alonso slowly gaining on race leader Jensen Button for not only the race win but also, more crucially, the championship, the Force India of Paul DeResta lost control and crashed on the main straight with a few laps to go. Resta's crash triggered the safety car, and with the race ending under the safety car, that was it. Jensen Button held on to win the Brazilian Grand Prix for what would be the last time he ever tasted victory on the top step, followed by the Ferraris of Fernando Alonso and Felipe Massa, finishing second and third respectively. Alonso fought long and hard in the final 71 laps of the season. But in the end, it wasn't enough to achieve that third world title. That honor 
went to Sebastian Vettel, who held on to 6th place, edging out the Spaniard by a margin of 3 points this time in the final standings. Once again, a brilliant mega drive from the front to the back and then back to the front again. Vettel, for the third consecutive year, was crowned as the Formula 1 World Champion of 2012. You're the World Champion! You're the Triple World Champion, Sebastian Vettel! You are the man! You're a Triple World Champion! Yeah, I definitely got that. Definitely got that. Sebastian is very a uh, member of a very select few. Stuart, Lauda, PK, Senna, Prost, Schumacher, Fangio, Vettel. Sebastian Vettel's 2012 stats look like this. 5 wins, 10 podiums, 6 pole positions, clocking in the most fastest laps of 6, with only 2 DNFs, both of which were an alternator problem. Leading 368 laps, with an average start of 5.1, and an average finish rate of 5.3. Another season, another championship sealed in the bag for Vettel and the Red Bull team. And guess what? They continued their dominance and winning ways the following season in 2013, which is considered to be a controversial one, to say the least. I say this due to what happened in Malaysia, but I'll get to that in a little bit. In the first race of the season in Melbourne, Vettel took pole, of course, and looked to walk away with an easy victory. But when it mattered, he didn't have the pace to keep up with Kimi Raikkonen, who ended up victorious as Vettel settled for the final podium spot of 3rd place. And of course, the race that we all remember, when Vettel won under <clears throat> controversial circumstances, and it took place right here in the Malaysian Grand Prix. This is how it happened. Weber had taken the lead at the first round of stops, now his teammate was getting frustrated. Mark is too slow, get him out of the way. He's too slow. Understood. Look after your tyres, do your best. Lap 43, race leader Weber was the last of the top four to pit for a fourth time. Crucially, he still led from his teammate. Their rivalry was well documented. When it came to fighting each other, neither would concede. Careful. But the battle continued and neither driver was willing to relinquish position. So the team had to intervene. Sebastian, multi map 2 1, multi map 2 1, and pick up two tires, please. Not Sebastian, they need to give him the space, hold position. This is silly, sir. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Mark. He was told. He was told. But Sebastian made a move that would keep everyone talking. <laughs> Sebastian. I was really scared. Their simmering tensions have boiled over once again. 
So it was a Red Bull 1-2, but it was Sebastian who led Mark, and that's how it remained until the chequered flag. Good job, Sebastian. Good job. Looked like you wanted it bad enough. Uh, still, there'll be some explaining to do. I think uh, if there's something to say, we need to talk internally, but um, for sure, I think we both enjoyed that. Uh, of course, um, I'm standing in the middle now, so I enjoyed it probably a little bit more, but uh, yeah, I think we have plenty of time to talk about. After this last stop, obviously the team told me that the race was over and uh, we turned the engines down and now uh, we, we go to the end. So uh, I won a race as well, but in the end, the team uh, yeah, made a decision, uh, which we always say before the start of the race is probably how it's gonna be. We look after the tires, get the car to the end, and. Uh, in the end, Seb made his own decisions today and we'll have protection as usual, and that's the way it goes. Clearly, Mark hadn't enjoyed it as much as Seb. Out of the spotlight, their impromptu debrief began. Sebastian made his point, but Mark wasn't interested in excuses. In regards to Sebastian Vettel, as you'd probably guessed, he had a solid start to the season with a controversial win in Malaysia, but there were also 4th place finishes in China and Spain, a 2nd place to Nico Vosburg on the streets of Monaco as well, along with 2 more victories to kick off the year, located in Bahrain as well as Montreal. Then came the British Grand Prix, which this one is infamous for the whole Pirelli tire fiasco, as Lewis Hamilton found out, who was leading at the beginning phase and was one of the many victims having tire problems, and one of the few having tire blowouts. Vettel thundered past Hamilton and was dominant as usual. However, a gearbox fault forced him to retire in DNF as Nico Rosberg took over the lead and stayed there until the checkers flew, sealing his second win of the 2013 season, as Vettel hoped to make a comeback with a vengeance in the next race, which was his home race at the Nürburgring. And at the Nürburgring for the running of the German Grand Prix, Vettel did indeed come back with a vengeance and led 44 of the 60 laps en route to win number 4 of the season, and the first at home at long last. Next up was Hungary for round 10, as Vettel led for 10 laps en route to P3, but it was car number 10 of Lewis Hamilton who dominated and won the Hungarian Grand Prix, which marked his first win of the season, the first of obviously many more with Mercedes, and the fourth in Hungary. What followed in the final nine races of 2013 can be described as, well, a one-man show. Literally. I say this due to Vettel going into a whole nother level, from Spa all the way to the season finale in Brazil, Vettel dominated and won the remaining 9 races on the schedule. At that point, no one could catch or stop him, as he was in a league of his own. 5 of these 9 races, which were in Spa, Singapore, Korea, 
Abu Dhabi, and Brazil, Vettel led every single lap from the front row of the grid. Not to mention, locked up the championship at the conclusion of the Indian Grand Prix, which he also dominated and won with ease. With Vettel claiming victory in the Indian Grand Prix, and with it came the championship, Vettel for the fourth year in a row was crowned as the Formula 1 World Champion. You can love this man, you can hate this man, but you gotta agree and admit, he sure as hell can drive and win. At the conclusion of the 2013 season, the final margin between Vettel and second place Fernando Alonso in the championship standings? 155 points is the gap between the two drivers. The win in Brazil, by the way, would mark the last time Vettel was victorious in Red Bull machinery. And it was also Mark Webber's last race in Formula 1 as a driver, as he hung it up and retired from driving in the sport. Webber did his best in his final year in F1 to end up third in the championship standings. 198 points behind teammate and champion Sebastian Vettel. And speaking of whom, Sebastian Vettel's 2013 season stats look like this. 13 wins. 13 and 13. 16 podiums, 9 pole positions, clocking in the most fastest laps with 7. With only one DNF, which was the gearbox cutout in Silverstone, leading 684 laps out front with an average start of 2.1 and an average finish rate of 2.6. The final margin? Like I mentioned earlier, Vettel outscores second place Alonso in the championship standings in 2013 by a whopping 155 points. However, Vettel's win in Brazil in 2013, which also I mentioned this earlier, would be the last time he'd win in Red Bull equipment, marking the end of a dominant era for the Vettel Red Bull combination. So, if we combine Vettel's championship seasons with Red Bull from 2010 through 2013, Vettel, during that time span, recorded, you won't believe this, 34 wins, 53 podiums, 40 pole positions, 19 fastest laps, 7 DNFs, and led for a blistering 2 1,173 laps out front. Those numbers right there define Vettel's dominance with Red Bull during that span of four years he won the Formula 1 World Championship with the Red Bull team. Four years of wins and podiums week in and week out. Four years of Formula 1 crowning Sebastian Vettel and Red Bull on top of the world. Fantastic, Seb. Record breaking in a season. Unbelievable. We have to remember these days. We have to remember these days. Because there's no guarantee that they will last forever. Enjoy them as long as they last. I love you guys. We have an incredible team spirit. Incredible. I'm so proud of you. I love you. Yes! Shake and bake! And just like that, that wraps up today's video presentation. If you've liked what you've seen, click that like button to show this video love and support. If you've really liked what you've seen, click that red subscribe button to stay up to date with more Formula 1 and other motorsport content on this channel along with NASCAR, as well as, in future, IndyCar. I also recommend turning on the notification bell so you'll be notified the second a new video comes out on this channel. 
But until then, I, Turn 4 Productions, signing off the mic as always, and until next time and for the notice, peace out, stay safe, and have a good one. You've done it in style. Fantastic, you're a four-time world champion. Brilliant, brilliant drive. You join the greats, mate. You're, you're up there, this, this Fangio Schumacher than you. Unbelievable, guy. You did it! Yes! Yes! I love you guys. I love you. Thank you. Hi, service Adrian. Fantastic. It's been a privilege. Well done, Mike. Sebastian, you're the 2011 world champion. Well done. Thank you so much. We took nothing for granted. And we did it. <laughs>